I started writing at a very young age. Uh, my mother has stories I wrote when I was five or six years old. Um, I also started a novel in my teens but didn't get very far with it. I think I wrote the prologue. Um, and then I started to write my first novel uh, after my degree about ten years ago. If I hadn't been a writer, I would probably have been a perpetual student or perhaps gone on to study archaeology after my history degree. Um, so I would have loved a job that involved digging up the past and getting out in the fresh air and uncovering secrets. It's actually the seventh book that I've finished and uh, had been submitting work to agents um, for many years without much success. So I got some good feedback, enough to encourage me. But uh, eventually I uploaded the first chapter of The Legacy to the Arts Council review site, youwriteon.com, where it, it's a peer review site, so other readers read it and they rate it, and it was, it was highly rated and, and went to the top of the chart, and that's where it came to the attention of editors at Orion, who took it from there, which is very exciting. Uh, the inspiration behind The Legacy came from my fascination with the way past events can affect uh, our lives down the years and how even the smallest personal action a hundred years ago can affect the generations that, that come after it basically. I wanted to write a story that would that would show that. It wasn't too hard to get into the different characters mindsets because they sort of arrive, they come to me fully formed the characters and you do feel like you know them inside out. Um, that said, I did write the two strands separately to make sure I, was, I kept their voices true and there was no blurring of their voices. And Caroline was a, a harder character to write just because I wanted to make sure readers understood why she'd done what she'd done, because she does do something in the story that's pretty unforgivable. Um, but I didn't want readers to, to lose sympathy with her. Erica was, was a joy to write because she, she's the kind of girl I think you would hope to meet in everyday life. She's basically a, a very sensible, logical and kind person who's trying to do her best um, and trying to make things better for the people she loves, basically. So I didn't think readers would have any problem sort of sympathising and understanding where she was coming from. Um, and her voice came to me very early on and was crystal clear. I felt like I knew her from the word go. Caroline is Erica's great-grandmother, who uh, Erica has very sketchy memories of from her own childhood. Um, Caroline lives to a great age. And uh, the story is about how something Caroline did as a young woman has followed her all the way down the years and has affected Erica's life profoundly. I chose Oklahoma as a setting for the historical strand because I really wanted Caroline to set out into the Wild West as we, as we know it and really get away from civilization as she knew it. She, she grew up in New York. Um, but I also wanted Erica to have met her as a child, so it needed to be set in the early years of the 20th century, which kind of made it 60 years too late for the real Wild West, which had kind of passed into, into myth already by then, except in Oklahoma, where it had been Indian territory uh, until the turn of the 20th century, so they were very much further behind the rest of the western states in terms of white settlement and farming. So it was still pretty rough and ready in about 1903 when Caroline goes there. The research for the Oklahoma Strand was just fascinating, and um, the thing that surprised me the most was that the cowboy era, as we know it, has, as I said, already passed by that time. It was an incredibly short era from the sort of opening of the Western lands, the long cattle drives. Um, by the turn of the 20th century, that time was already over. The, the railway, railways had come in, lands had been fenced off and settled and were being farmed, and the actual real cowboys who went on these incredibly long drives had passed into myth. And you have already that early on, sort of Buffalo Bill Cody's Wild West show, and the Miller brothers on the 101 Ranch who were beginning the myth of the cowboy and the sort of archetypal cowboy, an Indian show that we know now, has lasted decades longer than, than the, the real cowboys actually did. I would love to trace my own family history and when I have the leisure time I will. And we've, I've sort of started already and my family have done bits and pieces of research and we have some very old marriage certificates from, from some of my great-grandparents. Um, but particularly, one of my characters in the book says that we sort of wait until the people 
we love have gone before we realise we wanted to ask them things, and I think that's very true. And we, I lost my grandparents in 2003, and now I realise there's so much I didn't ask them about their time together and their childhood. So I would, I would love to go and find out more about that.